Welcome back to Finding Your Initial Customers. This is module three, four steps to getting customers. Here's my very simplistic view on how to go about finding customers. Step one, you have to truly understand the value that your product delivers. Then you need to understand if your customers know whether or not they've got a problem that you've got a solution to. Number three is get something in front of those customers. And number four is iterate and repeat. So for this program, I built a brand new product that I'm calling SendScore. And here's an example of the MVP that I launched. I did this in about an hour and I put it up on Gumroad and you can go check it out. I'll send links uh, later on in the program and I'll walk you through kind of what this looks like now. But the original version looks something like this. Increase email campaign opens and click-through rates with three plus actionable insights. So my product, what I actually launched the original version was an email marketing campaign review product where for $49, I'll take a look at your email because I've got a ton of experience in email and uh, I will give you multiple different action items and insights based on my thoughts uh, when, I, when I see and react to that email. So very, very simple MVP. But this is the example product that I'm going to use to showcase how I went about getting my first customer on this program. So step one, before you can find customers, you really need to understand the value. So start thinking about that value prop. So here's a few examples. Practical, practical ways to find and acquire your initial customers. That was the value prop that probably brought you in for this program. Uh, for SendScore, it's improve email campaigns with three or more actionable insights. And for Growth University, our value prop is save time growing your startup. Now it's worth mentioning for Growth University at least, We've gone through dozens and dozens of experiments to figure out what that core value prop that resonates most effectively with our audience actually is. And so this one took us a little time. I'll walk you through how to think about this and how to model this out. But as I just mentioned, we went through many different iterations on value prop. We're often wrong with our initial value prop. Uh, we have assumptions on what we think the customer wants and needs but we often don't actually know that. We can't prove it yet because we don't have any customers. So, but we have to start somewhere, right? So don't agonize over that if you just don't know what that true value you're gonna to bring to the table is. The next thing I like to think about is intentionality. Does your potential user or potential customer know that they've got a problem that you have a solution for or not? And so if you start over here, if the user is aware that a problem exists, then they're going to go and search for a solution. And the channels that are going to likely be great fits for you early on will be things like search engine marketing and search engine optimization, because SEM and SEO are made for a high intent audience that's searching for a solution to a problem. For the rest of us, it's our job to actually build awareness and point out the fact that your user or potential customer has a problem that you've got a solution for, and you're going to use paid social for that, organic social influencers, content marketing. Then you're going to drive people through the acquisition activation loop. Hopefully they purchase or engage, and then you're kind of done for now. So what's really key though, is that you understand that intentionality. Knowing whether or not your user has intent will help you make smarter decisions more quickly around marketing. So how do you know this? I mean, you're going to figure out intentionality through, dis through customer discovery and conversations that you have with your user, through looking at where some of your competitors are actually advertising, what channels are they hanging out in? And you'll learn this through running experiments across different channels. Then once you figure that out, step three, is to get in front of those customers. I love this example from Marketo. At Marketo, not only did we have SEO optimization in place, even before product development, we also had a blog. So before Marketo did anything with their product, they started marketing. We talked about the problems we aim to solve. Instead of beta testing a product, we beta tested an idea and integrated the feedback we received from our readers early on in our product development process. And Adobe 
bought Marketo for $4.75 billion in 2018 uh, after Marketo went public in 2013. But I mean, that is such an awesome example of a big, huge company that literally started going to market before they even had a product. Um, and, and that's the mindset that I want you to get in here is that you don't have to have the perfect product, but let's get something out there. So from there, then you just need to iterate. This is not a one-time effort. You're going to have to be persistent with how you're going after customers and rigorous about the approach and the process and uh, kind of get ready for, for a ride. Okay. In the next module, we're going to talk about building those initial buyer personas. I will see you there.